Hello, this is Ness Tilson. In this video, I'd like to show you how to use Stair Designer to quickly set up your own straight stair, starting from a simple standard template. Stair Designer is a very powerful bit of professional stair software and is used around the world by professional stair builders to calculate very complex stairs. And here you get to use it for free. If you want to follow me through this video, make sure that you have downloaded the template from our Wood Designer website before you start. When you start Stair Designer for the first time, you are presented with this screen. We have here the main menus and underneath the main command buttons. Let's load into our Stair Designer our template. Click on Open and go to where you have downloaded your straight flight template from our Wood Designer template library and click on it and click Open. Stair Designer now loads into its interface the template. The screen here is now divided into three other parts. We have in this area here the parameters of our stair. So we can see that we have 15 steps, 15 risers, the total height of our stair. Each step has a height of 201 millimeters. The tread width, the width of each step is 197 millimeters and the stair all is 600 millimeters. In the left hand side of our screen we have the steps in elevation and on the center of our screen we have the plan of our stair. We can pan around the plan by pressing on the scroll wheel on the mouse. I press my mouse scroll wheel and I drag. I can move the plan of the stair on the screen. Letting go of the scroll wheel will stop the panning command. Rolling the scroll wheel forwards and backwards will allow me to zoom in and out of my drawing. So you can position the drawing exactly as you want by putting a particular element in the middle, zooming in, zooming out, moving the stair around on your screen. To see the stair in 3D, click on the 3D button up here and we can see that the stair is now in 3D. By clicking on the mouse button, the left hand side mouse button and dragging you can turn the point of view of your stair anywhere in space and you can actually look at the stair from all angles. The scroll button, rolling on the scroll button, will allow you to zoom exactly as in 2D. This enables you to look at all the details of your stair. On the right hand side in 3D we have several ways of looking at our stair. If I look at my stair with hidden side perspective, I can see a wire frame view of the stair and I can actually see an x-ray view of all the different parts. Let's go back into a solid perspective. The background colour here is grey. You can change the background colour simply by going into 3D options and the 3D options menu will allow you to change the background colour here. So the background colour can be changed from white to grey. Click OK, we are now white. I go back into 3D options and change it to another grey. OK, we are now in grey. To go back into the 2D view, press the space bar. And here we are again in the 2D view. You can switch from 3D to 2D simply by pressing the space bar. So let's do some modifications now on our stair. Say that I want to change this stair and I want to change the stair height because it doesn't quite fit the height of the stair that I need. If I go back into 2D, I press the space bar, I can see that the floor height here of this particular stair is 3,020 millimeters. Let's go back into our 3D window. To change this, I'm going to use the stair parameters dialog box. Click on this little icon here called Stairwell Parameters and it brings up the Stairwell Parameters dialog box. In the Stairwell Parameters dialog box I have here the parameter floor height 3020 millimeters. Let's change this to 2500 millimeters or 2 meters 50. 
When I change this particular parameter, Stair Designer can now start calculating from this particular parameter all the other different elements of the stair. As all the elements of the stair are interdependent on one another, Stair Designer will allow you to verify the relationship that they have to one another. So that Stair Designer can update all the different parameters, I click on the Update button here. When I click on the Update button, we can see that according to the new floor height, Stair Designer has recalculated the riser height, the height of each step, and the width and the stair rule. And we can see that the OK button here is now flashing red. When the OK button is flashing red, this means that the stair does not comply to building regulations and that the stair is either too steep or not steep enough or the riser height is too high, the step height is too high or the width is not wide enough or the stair rule is not between 600 millimeters and 640 millimeters which is the case now since I've changed the floor height. To get my stair to comply to the building regulations click on help Stair Designer will reanalyze all the different parameters and tell us which parameters we can change to fit the stair into building regulations. Stair Designer proposes that we change the number of steps. Instead of having 15 steps for this particular height, if we use 13 steps, and if we look here on the 13 steps, we will get here the riser height is changed. It will be changed from 167 to 192 tread width will be changed and the stair rule will be changed to comply to the building regulations. If I click now OK, I can see now that the OK button of the stairwell parameters has gone green and if I click OK here, Stair Designer redesigns the stair with the right number of risers, the right number of steps according to our new height. And if I click, my, I press on my space bar and go back into 2D and I look in my flight parameters. I can see now we have 13 steps, 13 risers, a total height of 2 meters 50, the riser height has been modified, the tread width has been modified and the stair rule has been modified. In the same way it's easy to change any parameter of the stair and Stair Designer will give us recalculate the stair accordingly. Let's go back into our 3D view here. In our 3D view let's op reopen Stair Designer stairwell parameters toolbox and let's say for instance that the width of the stair which here is, is 800 so we want to change it to 1000 make it one meter wide this doesn't have any particular consequence on the stair so when I click update nothing is really changed when I click OK we can see that the stair width has been changed this has no consequence on this particular stair but it would have a consequence on a more complex stair in the same way we can change for instance the length of our stair. Here the default length is 2863. Let's change this to 2300 for instance. If I click update here now again, this time the OK button has gone red. And it, we can see that for instance here the stair rule is 568 which is uh, below 600 millimeters. The stair rule always having to be between 600 and 640 millimeters. If I click help button now again, Stair Designer says that if we put the number of steps down to 12, we will get the stair to comply to the stair rule. If we look over here, we can see that 12 risers here, the, the riser height is recalculated to 208, and the stair rule now becomes 617, whereas before, the stair rule with 13 steps was 568. If I click OK, the OK button has gone green, and I click OK again, and Stair Designer has redesigned the stair again, according to our new set of parameters. If I go back into our 2D, we can see here that the riser height has been recalculated, the tread width has been recalculated, and the stair rule also has been recalculated, as well as we can see clearly that the step is now much wider. As well as modifying the actual dimensions of the stair in Stair Designer, it's also very easy to modify the design. Let's go back into 3D and have a look at our, new, our design. On this particular stair we can see that we've got a handrail on the right hand side as we move up the stair. Supposing that we don't want the handrail on the right hand side, but we want the handrail on the left hand side. 
we go into parameters and we take handrail parameters. Handrail parameters here, we can see that the right hand side handrail is ticked and the left hand side is not ticked. Let's tick the left hand side and click OK. We can see that Stair Designer immediately puts a handrail on the left hand side here. Now, supposing I want to take away the right hand side of the handrail, we go back into handrail parameters here and I untick the right hand side and I click OK. And now we've only got a handrail on the left hand side. But we have a little problem here. Let's say, for instance, we don't want these bits of posts and we want to put posts on this side. To do this, let's go back into our 2D plan and we can see our posts here on our right hand side. I click twice on a post. This brings up my Mule Post dialog box. I'm going to untick the Mule Post dialog box and the Mule Post will disappear. Do the same for the bottom. Untick the Mule Post dialog box and the Mule Post will disappear. Now let's put a new post at the start of this stair. I'm going to move my mouse over the stair until I get a little pink point. Click right, which brings up context menu, which in the context menu I'm going to select new post. And I'm going to tick extremity new post. In the position reference point parameter, I'm going to put 80. And in the length parameter, I'm going to put the same thing, 80. I click OK and stair designer will put in the new post 80 by 80 millimeters. Going to the top of the stair I can do the same thing. Move the mouse until I get the pink selection. Click right, select new post, tick extremity new post, position offset 80 and the length 80 and click OK. We now have new posts on the left hand side of our stair and if I go back into 3D our design has been changed in consequence. Note if you're using the full version of Stair Designer, every time you change your design, the working documents, that is the documents you need to build the stair, are all automatically updated. If I go in to look into my working document here, we can see that we have in our working documents the plan of our stair, for the overall dimensions, and then we have a plan, a drawing and the dimensions of each particular part, steps and strings, posts, and spindles. And then we have our cutting lists and at the end of our cutting lists we have the total volume of our materials, the weight of our materials eventually and the cost of our materials. All this is updated dynamically as you design. So that's just how simple it is. The full version will give you all the plans, templates, full-size templates for cutting the parts and the cutting lists and you're ready to build your stair. If you haven't got the full version and you want to get the parts you have several options. You can either get the parts just made for you by one of our professional suppliers. In this case, you just send the file of your demo version to one of our suppliers who will send you back all the parts ready to be assembled. If you want to cut the parts yourself, then we'll show you in our training section a completely free way to draw the plans yourself or you can use our very affordable stair file service and get all the plans and full size templates and cutting lists sent to you by email. Just send us the file that you've made from your demo version and we'll send all the parts back drawn out full size by email so you can just print them out and start building. Whatever option you go with, you've now got access to an easy and very cheap way to create your completely custom made, custom built stair. If you're a business, you've now got an amazing tool to design custom stairs for your clients and you can build or outsource as much as the manufacturing as suits you. In my next quick start video, I'll do a bit of customization to sh show you how to create a more complex stair from the simple model and you'll see how easy it is to make changes and how easy it is to create and design your own stair.